Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna share some of my best GoPro underwater tips with you. I'm excited to bring this video to you. I've had a lot of questions over the years because a lot of you have seen how much I love filming underwater. So I'm excited to answer these questions and give you the best underwater settings, show you some of the best underwater accessories, and also give you tips for filming different subjects underwater, such as shallow reef life, deep reef life, somebody else, uh, yourself, or even an underwater scene with nobody in it. GoPro cameras are just such a great camera for filming underwater because it's already waterproof. So let's dive in and check out some of the nuts and bolts first about filming underwater. And then I'm gonna go into these different subjects and give you specific tips for each of these subjects so that you can get better GoPro footage underwater. The first underwater question that I'd like to answer is which camera is best for filming underwater footage? And the answer is basically any of the standard GoPro cameras not the 360 cameras, are gonna be your best cameras for filming underwater. These cameras have high resolution, they take great photos, and as you move into the Hero 9 and the Hero 10, you're getting higher resolution, and the Hero 11 also is gonna have higher resolution. So these cameras, of course, will bring you the best video resolution, but even if you're filming with an older camera, you can get some great footage underwater. The cameras are waterproof, as they are to 33 feet deep, so you don't need an additional housing from the Hero 5 on. And if you want to go deeper than that, there is a protective case you can use, which goes down to 196 feet deep. Next, I want to talk to you about the best GoPro underwater settings. Now, first I like to decide if I'm going to go to get video or if I'm trying to pull photos. Say I need to get a photo for a project, I'll kind of choose my settings accordingly. However, for both of these, whether I'm recording video or trying to get photos, I like to use video modes underwater. And I'll talk about how I use that to get photos in just a second. But first, let's talk about video. So when I go out and I know I'm going to record underwater videos, I like to set my camera to at least 4K at 60 frames per second. And that's available on anywhere from the Hero 8 up to the Hero 10, Hero 11, whatever we're going, 4K 60 is going to be available for you. If you're recording at least 4K video, you're going to have some really nice high resolution images. Now I also like to have that higher frame rate of 60 frames per second so I can slow down the action because a lot of times underwater, things happen quickly, and it's nice to have the ability to slow it down. There are a few other settings you'll also want to adjust when you're going in the water. One is to lock the touch screen. So you can swipe down on the back of the dashboard and lock that screen so that when the water touches it, it doesn't change all your settings. Another thing you want to do is dial in those presets before you get out in the water, because then you can just change between different presets. It's a lot easier than trying to change settings with wet hands. You can also use the button menu to change between different presets. So you just tap that mode button and quickly tap the top shutter button. And then you can use the button menu on the front screen of the camera as long as that front screen is turned on. And that allows you to change between different presets out in the water. If you're going out underwater and you want to get photos from your video, I recommend just changing the settings slightly. And you can set this as one of your presets. I like to record 5K 4 to 3 at 30 frames per second. And that's going to give you the full width of that sensor. And then you can pull photos from that and you're going to get really high resolution photos from your video. I actually barely ever use photo mode specifically underwater unless I'm looking for a raw file, like say for the cover of one of my books or something, then I'll shoot photos underwater. But otherwise I like to just record video in that full frame and pull stills from it. You just end up with so many opportunities, it's much easier and you don't have to wait for the camera to process those files. Obviously you guys know about my books, so if you do need help with all these settings or you just want to have a handy field guide with you out as you're filming, be sure to go pick up one of the books for your camera because it's really helpful and I think you'll enjoy it. Now let's talk about a few of the key elements that are absolutely necessary to get really good underwater shots. So the first thing you're gonna need is sunlight. And as you go underwater, sunlight is very, very important. It naturally gets filtered out by the water as you go deeper, but if you're not starting out with any sunlight, your colors are gonna be dull, and you're just not gonna have any vibrance underwater. And blue skies are the best. If you don't have blue skies, the water's gonna look kinda grayish. So two things you wanna start with, sunlight, blue skies, and the third thing that you really need is clear water. Obviously, if you don't have clear water, you're not going to see much distance in the water, and it's not going to allow for those really magical shots. Now, if you are filming in some water that's a little bit more murky, one thing you can do is use a over-under port, or it's called a 50-50 dome port, and this kind of allows you to get some subject that's above the water while incorporating under the water too, so it doesn't totally need to be as clear, although if it is clear, it's going to look more magical, of course, but you can kind of pull the focus up to the surface on say like somebody stand up paddling or a sailboat and then you get a little bit of that underwater action too. It's kind of one way to get around it if the water is not super clear. 
but most of all, you're just gonna wanna look for that clearest water possible. Let's talk about the subjects that you're gonna be filming, because the way you film is kinda of, gonna differ depending on what you're filming. The first thing I'd like to talk about is shallow reef life. Now, this is gonna be something stationary for the most part, where you're filming a reef, coral reef, for example, or even a kelp reef, but something that's more near the surface within that first eight feet of water. You can get a lot of natural sunlight in this area, and you can use that natural sunlight to light those scenes. Now, because the scenes are stationary for the most part, you're gonna to wanna to use cinematic filming techniques as you film that. So you can kinda of use dolly shots or panning shots, where you create a movement going towards the reef or across the reef to kind of create some magic instead of just a still shot that looks like it's on a tripod. You can also do that and mix that in too, but you definitely want to remember to create some movement out there since the subjects are stationary. Now as you get deeper, if you're going to go down like lower than say eight feet deep, you might want to add some lights in. So dive lights can be pretty expensive, but you could use like two loom cubes. They put out 1500 lumens each. And as you get closer to your subjects, that's going to actually help light up those colors to bring the colors back into the shots. And the way you do that is you want to mount it so the lights are not actually right by your GoPro camera. So you want to get one of those mounts that's got like a handle on each side and you can mount the lights on each side with the camera in the middle. And then you kind of aim it towards where the GoPro is filming. If you have the camera and the light right next to each other, it's lighting up those particles right in front of the GoPro and it can kind of interfere with your shots. So you mount the lights off to the side, you can light your scene pretty well and go down close to your subject and you can get some nice shots that way, especially as you get deeper underwater. But like I said, if you're in the shallow water, just go with the natural light and you're gonna get nice colors that way. If you do really wanna get close up shots, you can use a macro filter. So that'll allow you to get really close to your subject, like within inches, because the GoPro camera is gonna be in focus as you get closer. Filters kinda of add an element of mistake into your shots. You know, the more filters you have on top of that GoPro lens, the more light can interact with it or the more water can get in there, the more things can kinda of mess up your shots. So just decide if you want to get those macro shots, really make a point to do that. Go focus on it, get some macro shots, and then maybe take it off and go back out and get some other shots to mix in together. The next underwater subject I want to talk about is actually a subject, not as working with another person. Now this is great because you can actually communicate with another person and plan out your shots and figure out great things that you want to do under there. And I'm sure you guys have seen tons of magical shots on Instagram and YouTube of girls swimming underwater with light rays and fins and just all these cool things you can do while you're filming a subject underwater. So I want to give you some tips on getting the best underwater shots of people. Now the first thing you want to do is make sure that your subject looks good. So the first thing you can do with your subject is to just make sure they have an outfit that looks kind of good underwater. So you might want to use a wetsuit. You know a wetsuit, if you use a black wetsuit, that color contrasts really well and it also covers up a less than perfect tan because as you go underwater skin kind of gets like a little bit more white looking a little more pale and you want your subject to be happy with the shots another tip that's really important is to get some fins you know you get a nice pair of fins some people call them flippers but these are going to help you swim deeper underwater and be able to get down there and then relax the next thing that's really important is a good mask and i like to use a reflective mask like this one and that way you can't see the subject's eyes through the mask because oftentimes they look kind of strange and they just I think it looks a little more mysterious if you have a reflective mask. The next thing that's obviously pretty important is holding your breath. And you don't need to be able to hold your breath for a long time. You just need to be able to go under there and get relaxed for the shot. But the key is once you get under there, you're going to want to relax and not have your cheeks all puffed out, like looking like you're holding your breath. You just want to hold it, relax, get a nice shot, and that'll look really good. So the next thing that's really important is when you get underwater, you want to get down there, get to the point where you're going to film from and then kind of relax and just stop. And you can swim with their back fins still and keep your body moving, but you wanna keep your upper body still so you can get smooth shots. You know, the hyper smooth stabilization in the GoPro is really good, but it can't make up for super jittery footage. If you're swimming underwater like this, your footage is not gonna look good, especially for video footage. And even for photos, you wanna keep it still so those photos are sharp in each frame that you're getting a video. So that's really important is to get under there and keep your camera still once you see that moment you wanna film. So once you've got all those little details in line and you've communicated with your subject to show, tell them where you wanna be and where you want them to be, then you just go underwater and you try to work with the light, work different angles and work together so that you can both be under there at the same time and get those shots. I like to sometimes go deeper than my subject. Sometimes I like to look down. You know, you just wanna play with it and see what looks best depending on your lighting situation and also depending on the water clarity and where you're at. 
Next, let's talk about deeper dives. So obviously, as you go deeper underwater, that sunlight filters away pretty quickly. And as it does, the colors also go away. So if you're scuba diving or you're a really good free diver and you're going deeper than like 30 or 40 feet down, you're gonna need some extra things to make your shots stand out. Now you can use filters. A uh, red filter is used for tropical water and a magenta filter is used for greenish waters. But GoPro cameras from like the Hero 6 on, they actually have a lot of adjustments inside the camera. They're gonna give you these natural colors without a filter. So it's kind of up to you. I don't typically use filters just because the camera colors are pretty good. Once you get below 40 feet deep, you're gonna to wanna to use a filter though, cause then it'll bring those colors back in. The other thing you're gonna to wanna to use as you get deeper is definitely a light. You know, there's no natural light down there. So as you get deeper, you're gonna to wanna to use two lights, just like I told you, to light up that scene. And that's just gonna add the colors back into the shot that aren't gonna be there cause there's no natural light shining on it. Also, if you're going beyond 33 feet deep, you're gonna to need to use that protective housing that GoPro makes. And that goes to 196 feet deep. If you're a super scuba diver and you're going down to 1,000 feet, <laughs> there is a housing also available for that. And I'll put a link in the video description below so you can pick that up. But that's a little more expensive and that's for the serious divers who are going really deep. As you guys have seen from my videos, I'm a free diver. I don't dive really deep, but I have researched it all and I've talked to other divers. So you guys know I'm not going down to 1,000 feet deep, but I know some of you guys do and a lot of people like to use their GoPro cameras to do that. And it's a great camera for it. The next subject I want to talk about that's really fun actually, it sounds like it might not be exciting, but it's actually really amazing to get some good shots of this and it's just empty ocean scenery. So you can get some really cool underwater landscape shots or some of the action that's going on within the waves or just empty reefs. Um, there's a lot of things you can do underwater. And the thing I like to do with this, maybe I'm waiting for a subject to show up or I'm just out there swimming around having a good time and there's not really any sea life around me, is I like to really play with the lights here and I don't use filters or any lighting for this. I like to play with the sunlight and look at the rays and try to figure out cool ways that I can incorporate that into my shots to kind of make it magical. And I just do that basically by changing the angle. You know, I'll swim down really deep and look up or I'll try to find like the edge of a cliff that's blocking sunlight in part of the area underwater. And that's just gonna create some really moody lighting under there and just create a scene that's different than anything you would see above land. So that's one of my favorite underwater tips really is to just kind of work with that lighting for those empty ocean scenes. The last subject I want to talk about is getting the best GoPro underwater selfie. Now these are really fun to get. I love taking my pole down there and just getting some cool shots swimming around because you don't really need anybody else. You can just go into the ocean with your fins and your mask and just start to have fun underwater and get some cool shots in the meantime. The best pole I like to use for underwater selfies is the GoPro El Grande. So when you get that pole really far extended, it provides extra distance between you and the camera, allowing you to get a perspective of yourself without having to have someone else actually film it. I also recommend following the same tips I talked about when I were filming a subject on making that subject look good. You also wanna make yourself look good. So you might wanna wear a wetsuit vest or something if you don't wanna film your back, you know, like, cause you can hold your pole behind you and follow as you swim. I really like doing that. But a lot of times I just wanna have a wetsuit or a t-shirt on maybe. It'll kind of cover up a little bit of the skin unless that's what you're going for, which all good too. Um, but you know, just think about what you want in your shot and dress accordingly. There are a few underwater selfie angles I really love to get. You know, there's the one where you're following yourself. So you take your pole, you extend out a grande pole, and you put it behind you and kind of hold it behind your back. As you swim, you just get a follow shot of yourself. Then there's also just like the traditional selfie where you hold your pole in front of you. And this is where the reflective mask comes in really nicely because you're not looking at your eyes. It's a little more mysterious. You can kind of angle up and you get some of that surface of the ocean kind of reflecting down. It looks really cool. And another thing I like to do is just set my camera down somewhere on the bottom of the ocean. Just make sure there's not a lot of strong currents, you know, and you're not going to lose your camera. If it's really clear, you can keep a good eye on it. So I'll set it down, swim away, and then swim up to the camera. And you can get some really cool shots that way too. But most of all, just go out there and have fun. If you film a lot, you'll come away with some good shots. And a lot of times when I'm filming selfies, I'll film a four to three aspect ratio just so I get those wider shots because I'm so close to the camera. So you might want to try that too. I hope you guys found those GoPro underwater tips really helpful. I enjoy filming underwater and I'm sure you will too on your next vacation or wherever you live, if there's an ocean or a lake near you. Get underwater, get some nice shots. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. It really helps the YouTube algorithm recommend it to other people so other people can get these great GoPro underwater tips too.
Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys and have fun GoProing.